it's I think it's one most of the games he's ever played against Facebook really hard to beat um, for the Facebook players um, the interesting part of that one tomorrow it's gonna be on a map that has nobody has seen it was from the TLM from the team liquid map contest but has actually uh, um, uh, not one so it's not in the ladder pool it's called the old forgotten temple so it's a new map it's one of these maps that we introduce on a week-to-week -week basis into the map pool for the CA that are not the common maps that you will play every day in the season so this is gonna be super interesting to see and then there's two more matches to go we won't want to see a PVT again between Pluto and slum uh, Pluto 4.8 K uh, MMR uh, Protoss player and my dear co-caster who is currently uh, missing in action because I think he's still prepping with the game and I'm terrible disappointed that he's not here yet and then slum is a turn player with 4.6 K MMR and so I'm gonna be super interested to see that and then Frox plays against Kevin um, in the fourth game uh, on one of the new maps, Death Aura. So there's two new maps in there, Death Aura and Romanticide. Super interesting maps, Death Aura, very wide force space, I think. Everybody like looking into the pilot show last week, it seems to me that everybody really agrees that, that the big wide open area is actually gonna be the, um, the, the force. Um, Wait a second here, I gotta check something. The, the fort, um, but it's overall a very wide open map um, with a lot of aggression opportunities. So I'm gonna really looking forward to see how that's gonna turn out. And then the last one is one of the most beautiful maps we have ever seen in a map pool. It's gonna be Romanticide. That will be the, the fifth map if we play it. Um, the ace match that is undecided so far. Absolutely beautiful map. Oh, I see there's there's a mistake here in my in my graphics. I gotta fix that. That uh, blinking should not happen. It happens every weird time on the um, on the map pool for me somehow. I keep forgetting something. So as overall, I'm gonna be looking forward really to uh, this overall uh, matches today. I think it is gonna be one of the most exciting um, one of the most exciting matches we will find. Let me take a look here quickly. So I can actually uh, say the right thing. Round three, two. So, Zuckerberg are glass. Yeah, they won against Amazon Pain Forge. That was pretty, but it's really great. Three, two. That was um, casted by Steady F Steadfast. Check it out. Uh, Alexa 12 pulled one. So, um, very convincingly, one three against Google A Movers. The week before. Alexa 12 was 0 3 of Alexa 4 of Facebook's B team, also not a big surprise. And then 0 3 in the very first day against uh, RHECL. As some really, really cool to see, like they're completely undefeated. Facebook, on the other hand, also I think completely undefeated. And I feel that someone who was a little bit late finally joined the cast. Welcome back, Pluto. I see you were prepping for your game later. Yep. Uh, just practicing with Frugs a little bit. I mean, he has the PV, uh, ZVP up today, so mm -hmm. he wanted to just get a little warm up in um, against the Protoss. Nice. But you're going to play a Terran player right, later, right? Like, that's going to be super interesting to see. Yeah, I'm going to be playing Terran, but um, maybe I, I, you know, I should have practiced against uh, Front Stab or somebody, but um, this was for Frugs, so. Mm -hmm. So I've just discussed this a little bit or like got a little bit of an introduction. Both teams so far completely undefeated in the preseason and I would not put too much emphasis on this. Facebook won against um, uh, Amazon. Oh, I, I, was just, I, I was just about to ask for the invite, but yes, continue, sorry. So in the, in the, in the preseason, we won against them. And it looks like interesting enough, they have a lot of Grabmaster players, but MMR wise, looking at today's specific, today's matchup, it looks like about very even. And I feel we have a lot of really potentials for really good games between, yes. you know, Front Stab and Mastermind. That's actually the one I'm really looking forward to the most, like the very first game. Front Stab is such an amazing player. I really love like high level Terran play, to, like to see high level Terran play. And, um, and Master Man is just like a beast of a, of a Protoss player. Absolutely. I mean, this the, the whole the whole games today, like everything is relatively even. Um, like, and these teams are like very familiar with each other. Yeah. So it should just be a really, really great, great day of StarCraft, honestly. 
What do we remember from Master Man? It's, we have played him many, many times. What do we remember from him in the previous seasons? Um, other than the fact that he's just really good, I mean, <laughs> Juno played him on Zen. Mm -hmm. Um, that was obviously CVP, not a TV TVP. So, I don't think we've actually ever seen him in a in a PVP because we haven't had any Karen players before. Mm -hmm. um, but he's just really good. I mean, like gra a grandmaster level Kronos player. I probably have played him once. I think maybe uh, um, Star Spinach has played him and actually beat him. I think with the with the can cannon rush, if, if I remember mm -hmm. correctly. So, I mean, you know, it's it's an even matchup here. They're both 5.2. They're almost exactly identical MMR. Yeah, I'm super interested. And Frontstab, on the other hand, feels like a, a very... It feels like a macro-based, very standardy kind of uh, turn play. Am I wrong? Yeah, I think so. Uh, we haven't seen too much. I mean, we've, we've seen basically one game a week, maybe two if there's an ace match. But from what we've seen, he's almost always a defensive uh, player. Where he's gonna scout and react. And like we saw last week, he got all in, and you know he just he saw it coming. He prepared for it, and then he built like uh, the proper defense. And I think that's the way he generally plays. That makes sense. Um, I quickly jumped on the maps today. It's a really interesting kind of mix. We have some of the, I think they're like um, pillars of gold remains in the map pool. So they're all actually from the new map pool. Um, except for the second game that we don't play today. It's going to be played tomorrow. Lost Forgotten Temple, one of the TLM, like Team Liquid map contests. Uh, you know, finalists, I think, but didn't make it the, the cut into the ladder maps. So that's quite interesting to see. Um, Pillars of Gold, more of the standard map, second time in the in the season, um, well, second season in a row in the map pool. Quite interesting to see, you know, I think well, very well understood map. But then later on, we're gonna see Death Aura and Romanticide, which I'm really excited about if we get into that ace match. Yeah, the, the Old Forgotten Temple is a very interesting one, just because like it's not something that I think anybody has really played on yet, mm -hmm. <laughs> quite honestly. So it's just completely unknown. And that one is going to be Juno versus uh, Zesta's Best. So it's going to be very interesting to see if there's any particular strategy that you can find on that, on that map, because it's so new. And in fact, if you look it up online, it doesn't even exist on any forums or anything. Not on Team Liquid. The only way to get any amount of information on that map is to load it up in game. Yeah, I had to, I had to actually really look for uh, for the graphics for it. Um, <laughs> quite interesting. Um, let's jump into this game here as we we're speaking. Uh, top right in in blue, already on the way here. We're like three minutes into this game. Um, in blue, it is the Facebook Terran. It is a front step. Bottom left corner for Alexa 12 for the Amazon team in orange as always it is the orange protoss it is Mastaman. so did you see he built two reapers here yeah so he's actually gonna try to pressure the front with um hellions and reapers i think um and it might work right like Mastaman going for like a very greedy early expand there's very little behind it so far i think he went actually um nexus first Probably, probably gateway into Nexus. Um, of course, yeah, greedy. but not um, Cyber before, like Nexus before yeah, Cyber. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I think he, I think, I think you're right there. I think you're right. He, he went Nexus into Cyber, and, and that, now he's putting down his tech, and it's gonna be a Twilight Council. So probably, I'm, I, I'm feeling Blink here. He hasn't started it up yet, but it would be very surprising to me if it was like a DT Shrine or, or something, something like that. But. Um, you know, it's it's gonna be the question mark here is can front stab get any damage done with these hellions? We gotta see. There's two stalkers. That's not a lot. Three uh, reapers will make short notice of that stalker. One stalker pretty low. The probes have to be pulled. Another stock, that stock is still down. super low. A third stalker joining the fray, but the bows, bows of the Hellions really 
uh, low here, pulling back from front step. Five probes down, not bad. Pretty good, yeah. I mean, and he's gonna get a sixth one here on the other side of the map. The good thing that Mester Man did there is he had a probe scouting, which means that he knows it's gonna be a Widow Mine drop. He saw two Widow Mines there, and, that, and that's only for one thing if the Widow Mine drops. So he can prepare with his stalkers um, to just try to defend against that kind of a drop, even though his stalkers are very out of position right now. Yeah, the stalker bows up these stalkers very much out of the position, but he's gonna move them a little bit closer, gets another warp in here, but that might be a little bit late here. They're not quite where they should be, which is probably around the ramp. It's really about front step, just using that opportunity right now, instead of hesitating here. It's gonna go in now, we'll see what is this drop gonna do. He did a good job pulling the probes. I mean, it, it was a fast reaction there, which is which is very good. But he still gets three probes. And when you add that on to the damage he already did, four probes now. I mean, I think Front Stab is in a really, really good spot. He's up on workers. He has his, you know, barracks pumping out. Marines, he's got his Raven out. I mean, he's in a very good spot. And it does look like that he is not very interested in a long macrogram. He's really gearing up here. There's no third command center yet for front step, but Messerman is up on the third base. How do you come back from this as a, you know, if you're like a little bit behind as a Protoss player, what can you do as Messerman? Like, what's your ideal situation here for, for you to happen? I think what he's gonna do is try to do some damage with the Blink Stalkers and go up into splash damage. I think you really need splash damage. I'm very surprised he has no gas on his on his natural because I think you need to go up into Colossus or something. He's just staying on gateway units right now. He's getting charged. I, I don't think you can really survive like a, a big tank bio push um, at the third base if you don't go up into into uh, splash, splash damage. So a little bit of a attack here he actually blinks up into the main and i'm not sure this is going to be able to do anything i mean it's only four stalkers he can one shot scvs but but that's just like two or three scvs yes actually he actually loses a stalker here as it recalls and now yeah, that, that did not it, do that much <laughs> it's not that much right and front step in a really commanding position now and he's gearing up for that incredible strong one you know uh stim combat shields up uh, push at like seven to eight minutes with two tanks behind this and already three medivacs and a raven it is it's a really strong push from him yeah and i mean front stab is or sorry messa man rather is still on gateway units i mean he has you know <laughs> 23 army supply like he's doing his best to slow down the army coming across the map right here with his stalkers but i mean Oh, and a nice pickup with the uh, to save the tank there. So he's still gonna have two tanks with this push. It's looking like a death blow right now to me. It does certainly look like that. Front stop with a massive army, and there's only eight zealots and five stalkers and one sentry on the side of Mastermind. And front stop gonna go in here. Tanks in a really nice defensive position makes it very hard for Mastermind to attack into this. Gets a good angle with the Zealots on the tanks. Both tanks are falling, but there's still a lot of army. The Medivacs, lots of energy left on the ramp. And now with some micro, the Zealots are falling and everything that's left is four Stalkers, a dream, and they are not doing gonna go do it so well against a Marauder and a bunch of Marines with Medivac support. I would really like to see him target down some probes here because I think eventually with enough Warpins, this is gonna get cleaned up but you can get some lasting damage if you focus down a few a few probes. Um, but he is going to have to go get out of there. And now the issue for the Terran player is that there's no third base here. Um, he's just now started it. And that's that's not good. That's too late. I do think front step here, in my mind, he wanted to really make this killing blow. And then I thought the original position of the tanks were really nice, like up on that high ground really supporting it but he kind of left them alone there was nothing 
to soak up some damage for these us they could just like tear apart these tanks and with that you're just losing so much splash st as damage that it's really hard to like just fight up against these warbands from Mastaman. yeah i actually i mean i still think front staff is in a good position here i'm not i'm not gonna say he's in a bad position he, i just think he could have done a lot more with that push if he had like you said defended the tanks a little bit more with the bio but let's see what he can do here he's i think he's doing a little bit more of what you said here with the tank in the right position and he's keeping the bio like right in front of it protected good blink here from Mastaman onto that raven but honestly the raven in this position not the best and now front staff just teared through that protoss army and there's so much bio still left Plus one weapons upgrades for the turn already done, and that's GG. Front sub with that second push, with a much better setup, able to push through and uh, win f against Mister Man and take one zero for uh, for Facebook here. Good game. Yeah, I mean that that was incredible. Like. <laughs> Front staff is so good, man. I mean, he is, he he's know, a he knows beast. He exactly how to play. He, he is such a beast. Um, I was a little bit worried, as you said. I was a tiny little bit worried at the very beginning. Um, after the first push. But just like such a strong uh, follow-up push here and a much better positioning. Being able to really tear about apart that gateway army and interesting as you said right there was nothing there was nothing but gateway units here and a, and a prism there uh, was no colossus there were no um there were no immortals there were there was really nothing higher tech unit from the protos here yeah i mean i think you really need to get up into colossus it's so hard to play that gateway heavy style especially when you know it's like uh you're, you're you're behind from the original Hellion push. Mm -hmm. So. So cool. That was our very first game of today between Frost, Front Stab and Mastaman. And not Frontaman. <laughs> I'm mixing those two <laughs> names up. Oh my god. Did you watch? Did you watch uh, GSL yesterday actually? Yeah. Dude. It, it was crazy. <laughs> crazy. That was a group of death, wasn't it? Absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. Um, it's good though. It's good though. Um, Did you see the games on Wednesday though? Uh, what was it? Oh, oh my god. Maru, if, yeah, Maru yeah, yeah. And... if you have to watch, if you can only watch one day of GSL uh, this season, watch that day. That was really well done. Really good. Um, it was crazy. Absolutely crazy. Maru against, uh, who was it? Stats and Stats. Parting. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And the nukes. The nukes, exactly. <laughs> that was uh that was stats against it was stats, right? Against stats? Yeah, against stats. Yeah, yeah. god, it's crazy. No spoilers, but it's it's intense. <laughs> yeah. I mean if you have been on the on the StarCraft uh, subreddit, you will have seen all the memes about it. Uh because there are certainly plenty of those. Um so that first game, that was 5.2k MR, really strong, both of them. We're skipping the second game of today. We're gonna skip Juniper to Zess's Pass. That's gonna be tomorrow at 4 p.m. Just to make, uh, wait a second. Re-invite, That's gonna please. be today at 4 p.m. They switched it back to today. Oh, they switched it to game yeah, back? So they're gonna play today? Um, yes, at 4 p.m. Okay, today at 4 p.m. Works for me. Yep. That means the next one is you. So good luck, yes. you're gonna head off in uh, 4.K MR, MMR, PVT against Slum, Terran player, and Submarine. Um, not everybody's favorite map. It's a very strong map for Terran. Super excited to see how that's gonna pan out. Cool. So good luck, Pluto, and see you after the match. We're gonna jump into the third game of the series the second game that we're gonna cast today as said the second game itself is going to be delayed till 4 p.m today so we're gonna look into the third game between pluto as a protoss and slum as a terran on submarine let's get into this
in the top left corner for Alexa 12 pool. It is the blue terror. It's Lambda. Top right corner. My dear co-caster with the old school skin set. It's the red protos. It is Pluto. And I'm going to be really interesting to see how this is going to plan out because with the size of the map, Submarine Ali is really a strong map for Terran. Very short rush distances. It allows for a very aggressive play from the player. Really something that allows the Terran player to get a lot of early aggression in. There is a lot of visibility blocker to make it like allow you to move um, medivacs around quite easily and nicely. Um, and uh, position tanks really well. Super strong map, I think, for the Terran players. I'm really excited to see how Slumbertrick is gonna fare against this. Um, and the first thing we're gonna see here from our from the Terran players is just like an eBay block here. It's a little bit annoying. Nothing that I think will throw off somebody like Pluto. A bit of a miss micro here. I'm not sure what he wanted to do with those two SCVs over there. Nothing out of the ordinary coming out. Pluto going for that Zealot first here with a cybernetic score, getting a second gas, staying up from base for the moment. Trying to look for the timing of a second base. In fact, there is no command center yet. We're going to see barracks in a factory. As Pluto is looking into taking that second base here in a second, the natural. So, of all the players from uh, the Alexa 12 Pro team, remember Masterman? I have not done very much research on last season, but I can't remember having seen Slumbuck. He might be one of the newer players. He's getting up a command center now, so. Actually, puts it down on the um, directly on um, the ground. I'm not gonna float it over. Swaps into Hellions. So just everything pretty standard from him. Stock is getting out. Blink being researched. Zealot looking for some shenanigans, but more of a, more or less, nothing out of the ordinary. Both are just gearing up here. And so while we're waiting, let's talk a little bit about the implications here, right? The tournament format really gears itself that the best player to play, the best teams play against the best team. The winners against play against winners is called the Swiss tournament format. So as we are going through the season, we're seeing the winning teams playing each other more and more. The skill gap is getting closer on the top. Um, and the matches are hopefully getting interesting, more and more interesting. And both here, really contester, uh, good contesters for winning this season. Alexa has a look, or Amazon in general has a little bit more even doubt their overall skill across different teams. They used to have like a very, very strong A team with Alexa 12 pole. It's a little bit different now. Um, where it's a little bit more even Alexa 12 pull still a very 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 strong and uh, um, Hold on that thought there are four Hellions coming into the main base here off Pluto Three probes are already down another good shot here The stalkers trying to get rid of the Hellions, but not before the Hellions getting more and more shots off but with that battery overcharge Pluto so nicely holding this. Nice run by here. Uh, did not was not able to stop the Hellions from entering the base, but then really good reaction from our uh, Protoss player here. Um, so I was saying, you know, um, both really good big contesters for winning the season. Uh, Amazon evening out their skills across multiple teams a little bit more. Alexa 12 were really one of the strongest still. Amazon paid for it being one of the other really strong ones. Um, and Facebook certainly has always been one of the contesters. They always usually make it into the semifinals, sometimes into the finals. Um, those together with the, the Google A team and the Microsoft A team are just like 
the the strongest teams always like has a little bit of this uh, you know idea that the bigger companies just have a little bit more resources to you know more people to pull from and so the chances that you have a few really strong starcraft players is just a little bit higher um nice blink here from pluto into the main base but these marines will take care of this before he can snipe the uh, combat shields the widow mine drop i'm not sure if he scouted this widow mine drop coming in from slumdogs we'll see how that's gonna uh, do if pluto is gonna be able to see this in time and gonna pull his probes or if these can burn really good very early uh pro pull nicely done he's gonna target down that s uh, that medivac gotta be careful here he's gonna clean up the bottom once as he is chrono boosting out not even chrono boosting out he's getting his first observer that he really needs but gotta be careful this is just really annoying they're gonna reload and you gotta be really careful about their reload time and just in the nick of time pluto being able to snipe that very first one gets the medevac that's quite huge gotta be careful that's gonna fire here gets two probes not too bad looking into the supply Pluto holding on, has his third base up, but now there is a big Marine Widow Mine push coming out of the turn player. Shield Barrel is going down for our Protoss player. The first Colossus being out, and that's gonna make a massive difference here. Gotta be careful with the Widow Mines to not get chopped but with the observer out that push is easily pushed back here from pluto and with that pluto in a good position having a third base up the third base finishing up with slumdog as well on that high ground stock is chasing some of these marine stone but that push actually didn't do much that colossus just came out on perfect time was ready there with that observer being able to spot the widow mines and just a very convincing defense tomorrow widow mines gonna be dropped here probably one into the third base and one into the main um double forge coming up extended uh thermal lens being researched so let's see if Pluto is going to see this. But I do think he's going to be ready here. First Widow Mine is going to be dropped. No reaction so far. Good pull here in the last second. One probe going to go down. Going to trigger that Widow Mine. These stalkers going to might be able to blink and catch this. The Widow Mine being able to blink uh, to uh, burrow gets one probe. Very well handled here. Gotta be careful with this one. I think he might have missed it. He must be very careful that this one doesn't reload. Because... Oh! Oh! Yeah, boom! There we go. Three more probes. Oh, bro, five probes. Toto's still in a probe uh, lead. Has a base, was, has a third base up a little bit earlier. Getting more gateways to get the production ready going. And at this point, I think Toto's in a good position. Gets a little bit more... Uh, Colossus out Gets his plus one uh, Going external thermal lens is gonna finish Zealot legs are gonna finish up soon Starport coming out of the turn player So overall both are gearing up It's pretty even I think don't forget that while Pluto is up in workers well like now they're even in workers 14 oh my god, I just missed this Another two, 16 probes, another a Widow Mine drop, so much damage. Pluto losing a lot of drones at probes here. And now Slumdog in a nice position here. Up in workers, equal in bases. Now the forest base going up for Pluto. But Slumdog has a much nicer army together. Upgrades a little bit behind on Slumdog. So we'll see, will Pluto fight that 1-1 one, one timing here for him? It's gonna move out, it's gonna nicely, it's not quite aligning with that 1-1, one, one, so it's a little bit of an anti-push if he's gonna go for this right now. But he has three Colossus, and 1-1 one, one is not even close to being done for the Terran player. It's 
some nice snipes on these Vikings. He's gonna get squeezed in, but you gotta be careful. They're not being flanked. And that is a Protoss army being flanked from all sides. And that bio army, despite these being Colossus, is tearing through lots of Vikings being here. And now Pluto in a really bad spot. Down in army, 21 army supply against 67. And Slumdog just gonna move across the map here. One one being done now for Pluto. So he has that. He needs shield batteries, three shield batteries up. But all he got so far is a bunch of zealots. And Slumdog is like, no, I'm not gonna push into these shield batteries. They're gonna finish. I'm just taking my first base. I'm then equal in bases. I can just gear up and just go for another next push once my one one is done. Storm coming out and Templars being made finally by Pluto. So that will help quite a bit. But overall, it's looking really, really good for Slumdog here, for the Alexa 12 pool player against my dear co-caster Pluto. He's just gonna check here. It's one poor marine on a, um, on a lonely mission, uh, suicide mission here, to check for that fourth base. Knows it's up. Knows that there's a probe waiting to maybe get a fifth base. That's just a lot of Terran Force. They got to line up here with that 1-1 one, one being done. 1-1, one, 2-2 one, two, two just started for the, for Pluto. That's a lot of Vikings. And these tank positions are exactly what I'm saying. Like the submarine for you. Really hard to get into and kill these tanks here for the Protoss player. And it's so easy to fend and abuse. Like this whole spot here is basically no man's land for the turn player, uh, for the Protoss player. Some ghosts here are going for some good EMPs. Shield barriers are finishing a good storm. Absolutely perfect storm. That's the kind of storm he needs. Another really good storm for Pluto. The shield batteries are empty, but he still has that supercharge ready. The Vikings actually not doing anything because there's no Colossus to shoot anymore. But the tanks in the backline doing so much damage. And you can see the army supply of Pluto are dwindling. Archons being made, more warpins. But the supercharge is done. And there's still a ton of bio from the Terran player. Medivex still have energy. But the biggest problems are these two tanks. He just he can't go into this that easily without being absolutely punished by these tanks. He needs to take out these tanks. Blink back. Reasonably good micro, but he's in such a rough situation here. That forward base. More weapons coming in. But the overall supply is just saying everything about this. More probes gonna go down. The fourth base in shambles. A Colossus being out, but there's not much left for our Protoss player. It's a Colossus, a dream, and there's a ton of Vikings still here. And now the tanks are gonna siege up here at the edge. Another very abusive position here. Supercharged being done, but too late. And GG Pluto losing against a very strong push from Slumdog. And Amazon is equaling out the score, 1-1. One, one. Well, well, well. All right. That was a little sad. <laughs> <laughs> didn't go very well um where did you feel did it go did it go wrong like what happened here um the drops i mean the it, it was really just all about the widow mine drops he it was like he just kept dropping over and over and over again i think the first um the first hellion push actually i thought was defended fine i i would have i would have liked to have 
um, stopped it at the ramp or like at the at the front, um, which is what you usually do. But I thought he might also just drop it, so I didn't have my stalkers in position, and I walled it a little bit too late. So it hit faster, but. Given that it hit so fast, I actually didn't lose any that many probes, maybe like two or three. So I thought that was fine. Then the first one of mine drop was defended fine too, because he got maybe one probe. The second and the third ones got a lot of probes. And that that's where it all started to fall apart. And the, my economy just went down the drain after that. So yeah, then his pushes were really strong. He had more powering it than, than I did and you know, mm -hmm. went down downhill from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, like the uh, for, like the Hellion, absolutely right. Like the the Hellions were really nicely defended. That supercharge on the shield battery did a ton of work there. You only lost about two, three probes, as you said. Really nicely done. I think the first, actually, two, three widow mine drops, you defended really strongly, and then you fell apart in like exactly one where you lost lost sixteen probes. Yeah, I, I had uh, I, I clicked them all into the gas geyser by accident, and then that's where they all clumped up. So <laughs> you got one really huge shot, not mm -hmm. safe, not safe for Protoss shot. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, that 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 one was just a killer. After that, I had to attack. I mean, you can't sit and just uh, you can't just sit back and like you know play it out like you're too far behind. You have to go do something. But you know. It wasn't enough. Makes sense. And then the fourth base, one of the aspects I talked a little bit about it is how hard it is to defend on submarine against Charon in general and how abusive the tank positions are. It is, it's very difficult for you to get to these two tanks and kill them and they just did so much work. Yeah, they just sat there and kept firing shots. Yeah, out. absolutely. Um, I would say in general, my PvP on submarine is actually really good. It's one of my highest win percentages. Um, in fact, like I have about a 60% win percentage mm -hmm. on PvP on submarine. So that's one of the reasons I chose that map. Is my it's just a very good map for me. But um, it, it it really seemed like some like really knew how to how to use the map to its advantage there. Makes sense. And now we're gonna go into that fourth game of today. Between Frux and Kevin, Frux is pretty strong Zerg player, 4.4k MMR against Kevin, Protoss player, 4.9k MMR on Death R and one of these new maps with that um, very... Oh no, that's no Death R was the old map. That's the, not the new map. What was the new one? Is Slide Shade that I'm thinking about. I feel they have this... Do they use the same tile set? They use a very similar tile set. <laughs> Yeah, Not probably quite. very similar, yeah. Probably yeah, very yeah. similar. Uh, Death R is one of the old maps. I'm completely wrong here. Uh, yeah, it's one of the old maps. Uh, pretty pretty nice map to play, and I think it's, like... Uh, did you see Pylon Show on Wednesday talking about uh, maps? I think any, anybody, basically, everybody agrees it's, it's a nice map. I really love playing it. It's a pretty strong yeah. map, pretty standard. This is one of the first maps with the accelerator field in the middle. So that's yeah. the one that actually speeds up your units as they go through them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, from, it doesn't from have any. Happened, it doesn't have any good. Zer it doesn't have any good Overlord um, spots. That's oh, the main yeah. thing. It's very difficult. Like it's very easy to snipe Overlords in the middle of the map um, with like some stalkers or something. Um, it, there's no pillars or something that you can put them on as easily. Yeah, it's called the the perv position or whatever, right? <laughs> the perver position. Yeah, that's like how Pig calls it. <laughs> the perver pillar. Um, the pillar, yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> he has some good, he has some really good uh, name for things. I, I still love like Brenda. Like, that, no, that's, that's Loco. I think he calls it Brenda, uh, the uh, queens. But uh, I think uh, Pig calls it the knitting club, which is also pretty good. <laughs> okay, we gotta go into the PVZ. Uh, look at that probe. Look at him go. Whee! That's a pylon scout. Sorry. Continue. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to point that out because it just happened. Yeah, that's that's very very early as a, as a scout, right? 
I thought it was gonna be cannon rush. That's why. I yeah, <laughs> I, I instantly checked. Is this a gateway? Is this gonna be a, uh, um, a forge? <laughs> but it is actually just a gateway. So he's just careful. He just doesn't want to get 12 pulled or 14 pulled or whatever. Um, anyway, in the top left corner, uh, it is 1-1 between the two teams for Facebook. Our hopes and our dreams lie on his shoulders at the moment. This is the blue Zerg. It is Frox. Top right corner, bottom right corner for Alexa 12 pool. It is the orange Protoss. It is Kevin. Yeah, and I do think, you know, Frox is, is certainly someone who can you can play aggressive. And so it's not unreasonable to go like, maybe if there's a 500 MMR difference, maybe you just want to go and cheese me out, right? So let's play safe. And, you know, have that early scout ready. And, um, you know, just play my macro game from there. So, you know, because I know I'm going to win more likely was because 500 MMR difference at 4.5K k MMR is quite a bunch. That's actually like... You know, that's it's it's unlikely if you meet someone on the ladder with 500 MMR difference that you win um, on that level. I, I don't think it's quite 500. Um, Frogs, Frogs might be a little higher actually than 4.4. Yeah, he plays on Europe, so um, yeah, yeah I, I think he is a little bit higher than that. And I, I'm not sure if Kevin is is uh, rusty or not. Like that's not like because the, the funny thing is the last time these two played, Frogs actually won. But he won with a very sneaky, cheesy tactic, which might be... <laughs> Kevin, Kevin has, like, still... Uh, <laughs> still... Yeah, he might have the um, nightmares or, like, you know, flashbacks. Yeah. And, like, PTSD no. from yeah. What, what, what happened to him. Basically, in the spring, what Frost did was he did a link drop into Nidus, and he beat Kevin with this incredibly cheesy... That's I dirty. That's fight. really dirty. <laughs> it's like one of these things where you just like <laughs> you're gonna go and and just take a shower after you've done that to somebody like oh my god I'm so dirty yeah <laughs> this time though it's it's uh it's straight up macro man I mean Frugs is confident in his macro and I actually I played him in a practice game right before this he's he's pretty good at macro I mean he, he's really tight with his build orders he can deny the third with lings I mean he's he plays really well um I mean I did end up winning but like you know, I, I can see I can see Frogs taking a game off Kevin mm -hmm. with, with Macro. Interesting choice here, by the way, um, of the third base from Frox, uh, going for that a little bit more line. Not too uncommon from a from a Zerg, but it's the, that third base on Death Hour is just so easy to defend. It feels to me like a type of map where it's more about the fourth base, where games are around like, can you take the fourth base, can you deny the fourth base, and less about the third base. It seems to be fairly easy to defend in general. Um, so I'm kind of interested to see him taking that, like, a little bit more open third base here, but for a third player, on the other hand, it just helps him to spread the creep towards the uh, top right corner, which later gives him really nice attack path. This is really looking like an immortal all in. I don't think that uh, Kevin is going to ever try to expand here because he's not getting any gas at his natural. He's doing a four stalker in a warp prism uh, little push right here, probably to okay. just force out some lings. Um, and then I think he's just going to do an immortal all in. And it won't Look be about the time now that he would should you like should start taking a third, right? As a, as a proto player. Yeah. Yep. He should he should start thinking about taking a third if he was going <laughs> to. But he's certainly uh, not. <laughs> Look at how many gates are in the main, man. I mean, this is just... Yeah, it's gonna be, yeah, party. full all in. Eight, eight gate all in, I think. The question is, is Frox gonna see it? Because Frox has a very little vision of these gates being made. He sees everything that he has seen so far looks very standard, and he has not put much effort into additional scouting here. So really missing that Overlord scout that he should put in there um, and do it again and again and again. Another overload coming, but there's no speed here. He might be able to deduce from the lack of third. He does have one ling at each third base, which is that. a really nice thing that he does. And he might be able to do deduce from that that hey, this is an all in. And certainly Frux not taking a force, not droning at the moment, just gearing up. More links coming in. So I think he's he's smelling something. And he has seen it now, the move out. There's three Frux immortals, a ton of sentries and a lot of stalkers coming in this is a massive protoss army man yeah. I mean, this is 
This is huge, and he has a lot of force fields here. Look, look at these sentries. They're so high on energy. Like, Frux but at the same really time, gonna... Frux has really nice creep spread that can help him quite a bunch. Like, depending on like what angle he gets here from, has already like a spine crawler up. And now the force fields are coming out. They're instantly gonna get some really good target with the ravagers on these immortals. More links streaming in. But there's still just still a lot, a lot of protos here left here on the top. That one immortal is low. Oh my god, target fire him, he's dead. Another warp in here from the protos player. Really nice forward field catching a bunch of these rotors uh, um, out of position. Wow, I mean, the protos army is just wrecking everything that Berserk has right now. And it's he's only just... a few. Roaches and Ravagers left. And he's just eating up the... He doesn't even care about dodging the Biles. It just, like, eats them up. And that just, like, it looks like a, such a commanding position here. More links and Roaches being made here for our Zerg player. But I do not think that this might be enough. There's still so much Protoss, and the Warpings are coming as long as this... Uh, this Warpism is alive. This is going to be so hard for him to really defend this push because there's just more protos coming in. 12 props already, drones are down. Yeah, now the fourth I mean, field. Yeah, I think I that's mean, all she wrote. I can't see him defend this. <laughs> keep warping in, he's got eight gateways behind this, like, GG well played. Yeah, GG well played. Kevin, with a very, very strong. He gets his revenge from last yeah, night. Yeah, gets his revenge, <laughs> he's like, you sneaky, I sneaky too. <laughs> <laughs> a very strong push here from the proto player. With an immortal all in, takes out Frux and l makes it a 2 1 lead, which means if Juno loses today, that means Amazon has won. If Juno evens out, then we're gonna go to the eighth match, which I believe you're gonna play anyway right now. I think we're gonna have to play it because we don't know what's gonna happen in the, in the next game. Um, just to put a little bit of perspective, Juno is about 4.8k Zerg player, and his opponent just his best is about 5k. So it's a little bit of an uphill battle for Juno because um, it is like a slight MMR difference there, but it's a doable game. I mean, it, it could go either way, especially if you talk about you know Juno's aggressive tactics. Like he can take games off of. Uh, off of 5k players every now and then so you know we don't really know what's going to happen it's 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 a it's a question mark so we should play the ace right now we should play the ace now all i remember about zest is best though that this is really really damn good that's that is that is that is that's is, is best is is i don't remember him losing a game <laughs> In the last like season, he's a really strong player. Yeah. So I'm gonna really looking forward to that. I'm gonna watch the replay uh, probably tomorrow of that one. Um, but for now, we're gonna see which of the two ace players are gonna be chosen. I have a little bit of sneaky suspicion who Facebook is gonna choose, but we'll see. Oh, look at this. Um, Zestus Best is actually around, so they're just asking at the moment if Juno is around, because if Juno is around, we can actually play that second game. Yeah, I'm not sure if Juno is around is the thing. Um, he probably just like training or whatever. He, uh, yeah, he. I don't think he was, I, I don't think he's even online. I, I, I'm pretty sure he's He's not at his computer. Yeah. So. Chilling. He had, he had um, scheduled something. Sitting there in a strategic room, yeah. figuring out all the tactics he can use. He's in this big uh, command center, command center room down, down in the in the basement, overlooking, looking at all the strategies. He's got Look. 80 Excel spreadsheets open in front of him. Exactly, like his command team gonna advise him, showing videos. How can he beat Zestus best in the evening and take it home for Facebook? <laughs> that, that's what that's that's the dedication we love and like from Juno. Yeah. 
Nah, he, he just wants to go out. Yeah, <laughs> he's just like, dude, it's nice weather. Let's go <laughs> yeah, before before winter is coming. Can't can't uh, I can't really um can't really blame him for that. Who do you think is gonna Amazon's gonna send out though for their ace? Do you think it's gonna be Zestus Best or you think it's gonna be um, Nesta Man? It might be Zest. It's tough to say. I mean, I I think right now Zestus Best is not ranked. It's, it's interesting to see whether or not he's been playing on an alt or something like that. Um, but at the same time, like it's like. You know who's the, who do they think has the better chance of winning? Mm -hmm. Like you know, Mesta Man is like almost GM, but not quite. Is that his best is legit GM? But like who who has less? Who has more practice right now? Who is less rusty? They they know they know probably for sure that who our player is gonna be. So like you know, it, it's up to them. Like what what do they think it gives them the best chance of winning? Quite curious, right? Can you actually use this as best in this situation as an ace? Because generally speaking, when you look for reschedules, I guess you can. The two teams at the moment figuring out who is going to play their ace match. I have a sneaking suspicion who is going to be from the Facebook side. I will not reveal it because people might listen and then they're like, oh my god, we have the right counter for this. Um, there's lots to choose from on the Facebook side too. Lots of really good ones. Kind of depends. Who are you gonna pick? Who do you think they're gonna pick? It's very likely in my mind that Alexa is gonna pick a Protoss player. Yeah, I think it might be Zestus best. And we're gonna play this out on Romanticide. Have you played Romanticide? Yeah, I've played some ladder games already, right? So you must have played the map. How do you like it so far? Yeah, it's pretty interesting. I mean, uh, well, yeah, all the new maps this this uh, this time are, are pretty interesting. I played about 11 games on a Romanticide, 45% um, win rate. It definitely looks like my PvP and my PvZ are better on that map than my PvT. Mm -hmm. But that might just be because my PvT is just all around bad right now. So, uh, I have a I have a thirty percent win rate in PVP and a fifty percent win rate in PVP and a seventy nine percent win rate in PVC. Nice. Uh, so <laughs> it's just it's just like you know I cannot tell if Romanticide is good because or it's bad it's bad for PV it's, mm. it's good for Terran and bad for Protoss or if it's just that I am bad against Terran. That makes sense. There was a lot of interesting discussions around that um, fourth, that fourth base. I think was uh, has a rich um, um, geyser, yeah. and because it actually felt fairly easy to defend, um, at least in the discussion between I think. We have to find out the mineral, the mineral lines in the middle, right? Yeah, yeah, but that's not the hardest thing to do. Um, yeah. Particularly for for a charm player, right? Like one mule has gone. Um, talking about yesterday's GSL and mineral lines <laughs> and mules. Um, spoilers. But... <laughs> spoilers. <da -da. laughs> um, yeah. So I think there, you know, it's it's not the hardest one, but like I thought it was interesting in the discussion on Wednesday on the pilot show between uh, Vibe, Mechanic, Juggernaut, uh, and Atosis. They are mostly just got that it's actually really nicely easy to defend because it's such a high ground position. And so it's actually the better for its base sometimes, particularly for Terran players. Um, but just also in general. So I've never taken that as my fourth. I've always taken either the uh, the aggressive, like forward on the low ground mm -hmm. base or the um, the one that's kind of next to the third. I've never taken the the, the gas, the rich, the rich gas um, one. But I've taken that as maybe my fifth or my sixth base, but like, you know, the other two are just so hard to defend. A lot of games are like straight up three base. <laughs> it's quite funny. Um, in the chat just now, they're like, as someone is asking, can you do a countdown to reveal who's the ace? And the ace player of Amazon just said, it's me. So there was a little bit of a, of a <laughs> like, uh, a difference. But they already decided, um, they actually did choose. 
Zest is best. <laughs> and he just wrote in the chat, first game in months, boys. Let's see if I can pull one out. <laughs> <laughs> and to That's no crazy. surprise on the Facebook side, that is the one I would thought we're going to pick. It is going to be front stab. So this is going to be really, really, really exciting. Zest is best is a beast of a player. Um, we're going to apparently quit. Uh, and yeah, that's what I was saying before because Mesta Man is more like less rusty. He's more practiced. He's he's been playing, but fr but Zest is best is probably the better player if yeah. he's like, in shape. But he might not be right now, given that he says he hasn't played in months. <laughs> but like you know, they still think he gives him the best uh, the best chance of winning. So make sure you lose and uh, get out of the lobby unless you already have a lobby invite to the new lobby. I just got into the new one. Okay, um, cool. Let me let me invite you. But that's gonna be exciting, man. PVP again. Yeah, I'm gonna be super excited um, because I I love how front step plays. I just I, he's so so strong. He also has not lost a game for us, has he? No, he has not. He he is undefeated. <laughs> I could, could change my headphone battery. Batteries, man. <laughs> there we go. Change my battery quickly. Um, yeah. So I'm interested in seeing how Zest's bet is going to hold up. He was one of the strongest players. I would love to. As I said before, I think he was mostly undecided, uh, undefeated in the last season. At least it's what my memory says. It doesn't mean that it's true. So if somebody uh, breathes it up, it might be very well a big, uh, you know, a <laughs> big miss here. I'm super eager to see uh, my very first game on Romanticide that I'm gonna cast. It's kind of a beautiful map. Um, it's on by Maras, right? Yeah, it's only by Maras. This is the biggest uh, lobby of all time. I mean, we got Light and Kata and everybody in here. Whisper. Oh yeah, it's all the old, uh, all this the other t um, Amazon people, right? Same for us. Yeah, we got everybody in here. Everybody get in here. Let's get a link to Graham in here too. Yeah, everybody. Pile on it. It's like one of these things, you know, when uh, the... <laughs> um, Sasa's not ready. Um, but go anyways, okay? He's just in a really good mood. Um, the... Uh, where was I? In the you know when you when you see the, the professional games sometimes at the very end you see the re the replays of it it's just like twenty people leaving because it's like so full yeah. of people um, and and observers it's it's quite interesting yeah. but Probably. this is quite this is probably the largest uh, audience I've seen so far <laughs> for a CA match and I'm incredibly excited for the ace match between Front Step and Zestus Best. It might be the most important match of the day for Facebook or it might be worth nothing if Juno loses today. So there we go. In the bottom right corner for Amazon, it is in yellow as all the time. He's always in yellow. It is the a yellow Protoss. It is Zest is best, also known as Charlie. In the bottom left corner for Facebook. All the hopes and dreams lie on his shoulders. It is the blue Terran. It's front step. I think Zest is just trolling. <laughs> it's like he's putting here in. Oh my god, first I'm seeing this map, but obviously he knows uh, how to wall this up. Uh... I'm looking up the, the wall right now, and I'm, I'm trying to see if it's like an interesting different kind of wall, because... Um, actually, yeah, I don't see... I don't remember quite what, what they've done. Like, if you... So he's gonna clearly put his Cybercore in the middle of the gateway and the pylon right here but i'm trying to i'm trying to figure out whether the reaper could come up on the edge i remember there was one of the maps like i think it was vibe or no pig discussed pig discussed on his stream the reaper jump points of the new maps and there was one of the maps and i i thought it was romanticide but it could be wrong that it's literally impossible to wall mm. i think it might actually be romanticide as it's, it's not possible to wall it because I can't 
I can't find a picture, and usually Gemini will post these like Reddit threads, um, and he did uh, a couple of days ago. He posted a Reddit thread with the Reaper walls for all the maps, and Romanticide is not on there, which, <laughs> or which at least not for the, the the jump. The jump doesn't have a picture. And yeah, it, that's it, that's what we're talking about, like walling the jump here, right? Like that's the common strategy here for Protoss players. Funny enough, leaves him a little bit open um, for Hellion Harass in the, in the, in the um, through the main. Yeah, run. Zest, he's not playing like a modern style here, right? And that, that might be what he's saying that he hasn't played in months. Like, the modern style would be you put the second pylon at the bottom to, ramp, to wall off the ramp at the bottom so that the Hellions can't get through. <laughs> but he's not doing that, and that's so interesting. This Reaper might find this probe. It's gonna be so close. Oh, he just barely misses it. This is best just being now he finds the probe. This is best just being very sneaky here, being careful um, if there are any proxy um, buildings from the Terran player. Let's try what he's doing with this probe here. Second base already up. That's just very standard out of both of them. I haven't seen the, uh, the front wall, but there is no, there isn't one. If he had just made four or five Hellions and gone across the map, he would get so much damage done. Yes. Because the shield batteries are also quite late. Well, at least yeah, one. There's even another shield crazy. battery in the main. He could literally just walk into the main and do so much damage. And he needs to see the DT Shrine too, that's another thing. He really needs to see that, because if he doesn't save up his scans, he's gonna be in a lot of trouble. Um, the Reapers are gonna try to get up here, right? Are they gonna try to get up here? No, that, that pylon right there is a full wall. I said, when he added that pylon, it's a full wall. Sure. That one on the left? Yeah. Yeah. It, even if it's not a full But it feels to me that there's still a jump point up here, but that he could just jump up and see. Yeah, 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 you're right. He can jump up, but he'll lose the Reaper. Um, In but, this but, case, it would be worth it, but he does not know that. Yeah, <laughs> That's the problem. It. So, Zest is best is going for a Dark Shrine um, and actually proxying a gateway here on the top side. And the question is, is Front Step gonna see this sneaky play here or is he not there? So. Uh, Widowmine, uh, Medivac with Widowmine drops coming out, but the first DTs are being made. No scan available. He has no energy right he now. He has no energy, but a Raven is being made. Oh, that would be so clutch. Yeah, if he if he gets that Raven out. Does he see the Dark Templars? First Dark Templar is arriving. He now knows that there are Dark Templars on the base. In the meantime, seven probes and six SVs are falling. The Raven is about to pop out. First scan of being used. Actually, that was that was a useless scan. He should have not used that scan. That was like a half a second before the Raven popped out. A little bit of a mismanagement here from front step. 18, 18 SVs fell in the main base. Front step falling apart down to 20 SCVs. It's an absolute disaster. Zest is best. Aligning is here, right? Is that DTs don't really do much. Like the DT tech doesn't do anything after the initial DTs. But what is it worth? It's like 200, like 150, 150. What is the shrine? 200, 150, something like that. It's not that much. Like 18. 18 SCVs, it's huge. He's down to 24 SCVs against 45 oh, probes. I'm gonna be a uh, charge all in here, probably with, uh, maybe he'll keep the DTs, I don't know, but look at all the gateways going down. It's a charge all in. Like, there's no way he's, he's there's no robo, there's no third base. Like, he's not, he's not macroing up. He's just gonna all in. Zastus Best is not in the mood to make this a very long game. He is in there for the finish. He needs to keep the raven alive too, is, is another thing. He, if, but if he, ha he, gets he has raven tanks up. He has tanks up, and they are really nicely positioned. Um, the bunker is really good. 
a more deeper just to block the AI here from doing something. So some really good stuff coming out of that. Gotta be careful with a Raven. Oh my God, don't lose the Raven. Really nice hold here. So far. Yeah, so far so good. But the issue really is look at the worker count. 25 to 45. That yes. initial DT push did so much damage. Even if he doesn't kill him right here, he's still okay. And the bunker is down, and that was super important. And now he comes from in from the side. Nice little missile here. Another good push. Some good scans here. Pushing back that army again and again. I does he know? Has he realized that there is a freaking gateway over here? There's nothing that he can do about it at the moment because he is just holding on with to uh, like. <laughs> He's just holding on to dear life here. Um, one of the tanks is down, I think. Yes, just one tank left. And that tank has to put some overtime in. The bunker gonna fall. And I think that's, I think he should just push through. With the tank being down, I think there's nothing left for front step and I think that's his best with a massive with the sneaky DT play being able to pull ahead the 18 SAVs kill in the main base is all he needed following up with an all-in and that means Alexa 12 pool won this round and this series no matter what that was a great strategy man with the DTs and then the charge all-in like it is super tough because he had the Raven out. It was just like he was just a little bit too spread thin. I think he could have could have held it, held it honestly. Um, it was just like a little bit of a misplay there. Didn't pay attention for, uh, you know, five seconds, and the TT just shreds through these SCVs, and that's it happens at the highest levels. Um, kind of sad to see from front sub, but that's there you go. Your first front sub loss. <laughs> there it is. I mean, yeah. everyone's got to lose sometime, right? Our regular sometime. What a great series of games. I really enjoyed this. This was great. Um, that means Juno and Zestus Best don't have to play. It doesn't really matter, but they might play today later. Um, and uh, yeah. That was fun. Yeah, that I was mean, fun. we lost, but you know, it's a regular season. It's not the biggest. Uh, it's not the biggest deal whether we win or lose against the defending champions in the regular season. It's gonna come down, I think, to the playoffs, anyways. So it's it's this one is just for fun. It's not like we were using all the best strategies. We weren't even hiding anything. We were just trying to, you know, play it out. Yeah. You know. We Here's, that's an interesting one, right? Because you're effectively meet most likely gonna meet the same team about three times this season. You're gonna meet in the preseason because it was that's just how the seating worked in the preseason. You meet them in the regular season, but then because we're one of the strongest teams there out there there's a very high likelihood that we're all going to end up in the playoffs, right? And we're probably even ending up on different sides of the brackets on the playoffs. So we're going to meet each other in like the quarter or in the semifinals earlier. And so that's when it actually matters. That's when it's like elimination. That's when all the dirty strategies need to come out. That's where you're all in them, where you put the best players up. Um, right? Absolutely. So you know, yeah. you might not play then. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did it. Um, got him. <laughs> I got him. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, it, it's for fun anyway. I mean, the whole tournament is for fun, but like, it, 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 this, this, this in particular is not a super meaningful game. Um, but you know, we did beat Pain Forest last week, which I don't think we've done before. So that's mm -hmm. that's a nice, um, you know, Im improvement. But we still have work to do to beat to beat uh, Alexa. So you know, until we face again in the finals or in the uh, in the playoffs, maybe the finals. You know, it's 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 not a big deal whether we win or lose in the regular season. Absolutely. Cool. Um... That's all that there is, I think. Any yeah. last closing thoughts? I don't think we have... Do we have an interview today? I don't think we have an interview today. Any last closing thoughts on your end before we're heading off into um, the rest of the weekend? 
not really. Um, GG's, you know, and see you guys next week. See you next week. Really appreciate it. And everybody, make sure you follow me on the channel. It's going to be next week around 11 a.m. again for some StarCraft 2 CA. Really appreciate everybody being here. This one goes to Alexa 12 Paul, but it's not going to be the last time. We're going to fight them. We're going to do our very best to beat them this season, hopefully in the playoffs. So thank you, everybody, and have a good rest of the day. Cheers and goodbye.